Hey everyone, welcome to our daily Devo, our second Devo on the first book or letter to the Thessalonians in the city of Thessalonica or Thessalonica, depending on which part of the world, north or south, you're coming from. I want to talk to you today about discipleship. I think when you read Thessalonians, you see clearly how Paul's intention was to make disciples in Thessalonica. He wanted to reach people with the gospel, help people start a relationship with Jesus, and help them become strong in their faith in following Christ. That's basic discipleship. With that in mind, we can see why Paul is writing to them because, you know, when you start seeing a spiritual result happen in somebody's life as a result of your interaction with them, it really develops a deep, deep relationship, a deep love and affection toward those people. And I think for me, that's what stands out from this chapter. All the love and care that Paul had for the people of Thessalonica or Thessalonica um, just shows to me how important that old adage is that says, people don't really care how much you know until they know how much you care. I don't know if you've struggle to make disciples in the past or struggle to kind of get to that point of, you know, stepping into a discipleship relationship with somebody. Um, And I want to encourage you that the key to discipleship is relationship. It's care. It's honest and sincere care. And if you read some of the verses here in the second chapter of first Thessalonians, you see how much Paul cared for the people that he was, um, that he was there with, that he was there for. First, he says that, you know what, we didn't come here for our own glory. We didn't come here for our own comfort or for our own purposes or agendas. We really came to preach the gospel to you. And we really came to to glorify God and to seek your well-being. And then he says, like in verse 7, we were gentle among you, like a nursing mother taking care of her own children. So being affectionately desirous of you, we were ready to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own selves, because you had become very dear to us. It is really, really true that once people start experiencing that you actually care about them, that they're not just a project that you're trying to convert or a project that you're trying to accomplish, or finish, once people start building that trust that you care about them, how it goes in their lives, what their lives are about, they slowly start opening up to you and start giving you a little bit more to work with when it comes to helping them knowing God and following Jesus. Verse 9 says here, Remember, brothers, our labor and toil. We work day and night that we might not be a burden to you while we proclaim the gospel to you. And you are witnesses and God also of how holy and righteous and blameless our conduct was toward you and the believers. For you know how like a father with his children, we exhorted each one of you and encouraged you and charged you to walk worthy uh, of, in a manner that's worthy of God, who calls you into his own kingdom and glory. From these couple of verses, I see two things. The first is that, again, love causes us to work hard for people. It causes us to have passion for reaching them. But secondly, it also causes us to model how we want them to walk. They were living in front of the people the way that they were preaching about. And it's so important that as disciple makers, we are able to say to guys, hey, come follow me as I follow Jesus. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it has to be intentional and it has to be progressive progressing toward growth. And then it says that, like a father, we exhorted you. There's just something about a discipleship relationship that becomes special. And I, wanna, I want each and every one of you to experience the, the wonder of being able to make disciples and walk with other people as they learn about God, commit to God, and start following Jesus with you. The last verse I want to read for you is the following. It says, For you, brothers, became imitators of the church of God in Christ Jesus that are in Judea. For you suffered the same things from your own countrymen as they did from the Jews who killed the Lord Jesus and the prophets and drove us out. You see, when when we're making disciples by the power of the Holy Spirit, 
we end up producing followers of Jesus that are able to withstand persecution, that are able to withstand all the struggles and the resistance that might come to us because of our faith in Jesus Christ. So once again, care for people well, model for them how you want them to live and make sure that you are doing this in the leadership and guidance of the Holy Spirit. And that way, your efforts to make disciples will become much more fruitful. I pray that God will help us. Father, show us just the care that you have and the the passion and compassion you have toward us so that we might have that for our fellow men. Father, thank you that Paul showed them all of this before they even decided. And when they then decided, they received Paul's words, not as man's word, but as words from you. I pray, Father, that every one of us will get to that place where people might receive our words about our faith in you as not our words, but as your words to them, loving on them, reaching out to them to start a relationship with you. That is our highest goal. And that's what we pray you enable us to do today. We pray that in Jesus name. Amen. I hope you have a wonderful, fruitful, disciple making day. God bless. Mm -hmm.